Hi everyone, and sorry if I'm looking a little rough. I've been wrestling with my dishwasher all morning trying to get it to work, and then I finally freaking gave up and uh, washed three days worth of dishes by hand. So, uh, like a chump. Washing dishes by hand like a chump. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to be... just pisses me off. I'm, I'm going to be not very happy until I can scrape together the thumbs to get myself a new dishwasher. Um, because I don't think I can fix it this time. It's, it's very sad. Very sad. Anyhow, uh, enough about my problems and on to other people's problems. A uh, few people have um, asked me if I would say something about Donglegate. And, uh, yeah... Yeah, they, they want to know if I have an opinion on it, and, and and I do, I do. Ironically, I have an opinion on something, and I'm about to share it. And as you can see from the title of this video, A Tale of Two Innuendos, I will be comparing two incidents uh, in which there was a sexual innuendo made. And then we will go from there and draw what conclusions we may. So, for the first tale, uh, and yeah, if, if any of you just don't want to hear the whole rundown again. You can go ahead and uh, and skip ahead. I'm gonna like annotate the uh, the time when I stop talking about Donald Gate, um, at least as far as what went down. And uh, and then we can move on. Um, so if if any, I I won't feel bad. I won't feel insulted if anybody wants to skip this bit. For the sake of anybody stumbling on this video six months or a year from now, after having spent an, expended, an extended period of time in like a coma or the Himalayas or something like that, I'm going to give a brief rehash of, of all the stuff that went down. Adria Richards, a tech evangelist, whatever the hell that means, uh, recently attended the PyCon conference, um, which is a tech conference. And uh, seated in the audience at one of the presentations, she overheard a private conversation between two guys sitting behind her. These guys made some off-color jokes about forking someone's repo and having big dongles. Now, if that were me sitting with those guys, it probably would have gone a little bit further than that. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of other double entendres to be found in the language of tech culture. If somebody naughty-minded enough just only went looking for it, um, but that's just me. Suffice to say, the, the, the forking might be considered racy enough to require a PG label if it showed up in a sitcom, but I would not be surprised if something like Big Dongles could make an appearance on a G-rated show like iCarly. So we are talking pretty innocuous stuff. Anyway, Richards was not only deeply offended by these jokes, she was horrified on behalf of all of the young girls uh, who might have one day been the future women in tech, except for the oppressiveness and injuriousness of men who openly, in private conversations, direct dongle jokes at people other than said women, um, thereby keeping said women, I don't know, chained to stoves or something like that. So, in a rapture of feminist self-righteousness, she ignored the dictates of normal human interaction and the procedures laid out in the conference's anti-harassment policy, opting not to ask the men to please just shut the fuck up, or approach the conference staff and apprise them of a problem. Nope, she took a photo of the two men and a bunch of other guys, uploaded it to Twitter, and uh, made a very public request to the conference organizers that the offending men be removed. In her orgy of self-praise over her courage in uh, taking a stand by not confronting the men themselves, and not getting out of her chair to find a staff member, and, you know, her forthrightness and her moral rectitude in publicly pantsing these guys, she went so far as to call herself a hero. A Joan of Arc, no less, only without the visions. Delusions, perhaps, but we'll leave that for now. One of the dongler's employers apparently discovered the tweet, and the hapless dongler was summarily fired. Uh, this is a father of three, loved his job, sucks for him. I didn't read the press release if there was one, but I imagine it went something like this. We are an upstanding and moral company that takes sexism very seriously, and we employ no donglers or repo forkers here, thank you very much. Please don't hurt us, feminists. We're with you. Look, we chopped this guy's head off to avoid being labeled anti-woman. Please don't launch a media smear campaign that will damage our business. We're not misogynists, we promise. Don't boycott us, please! Or something like that. 
Now, by this time, there was already a great deal of discussion online, much of it critical of Richards. Many people believed she not only crossed a line in uploading that photo to Twitter, which she did, but crossed another line into regressive toddlerhood by being offended by dongle jokes in the first place. Several women, I think feminists call them chill girls, or perhaps gender traitors, in the tech community lambasted her for making their jobs just that much more difficult by cultivating an environment where men feel like they can't speak freely with their female co-workers or build friendly, relaxed relationships with them. These women seem to enjoy their work, and they want to continue to enjoy it in an environment that isn't stifled by suspicion and Orwellian limits on their speech. Now, almost unanimously, feminist bloggers and journalists rallied around Richards, defending her behavior, some even defending the firing of the dongler, and declaring that conferences are professional gatherings and therefore no place for sexual innuendo, even when it occurs in the context of private conversations one was not invited to eavesdrop on in the first place. And then a tweet by Richards from a day or three before was uncovered, where she had made a dongle joke as well. Okay, a stuffed sock shoved down a man's pants joke. And then 4chan got its dongles in a twist. Too many socks shoved down there, maybe? 4chan is not exactly a bunch of people that you want to piss off. As random and weird and not fit any as they might be, they're really good at getting things done, and get things done they did. They bombarded Richard's employer, Sengrid, with all kinds of threats, attacks, and nonsense, and Sengrid fired her. Very publicly, with a press release and everything. Feminists, by and large, not only continue to defend Richard's and condemn the unjustified actions of 4chan, they still claim there is no place in any professional setting for sexual innuendos, no matter the context, as this constitutes sexual harassment and creates a hostile environment and all that jazz. Though some of them will admit that she went about making her complaint in the wrong way. They stand behind her right to complain about the dongle joke, her right to have the donglers ejected from the conference, and her right to be outraged on behalf of all women, and future women, everywhere. Some admitted that dongle jokes might not be something to get your panties in a twist over, but that the cumulative effect of years of sexist microaggressions rendered Richard's reaction to the dongler's jokes justified, and certainly for forgivable. You know, you gotta credit them, because as much as they backpedaled, and as much as they sort of backed off of, of fully supporting Richard's, uh, feminists did maintain uh, consistently throughout the debate that um, sexually charged remarks are always inappropriate in professional settings, and that there really is no excuse for making people uncomfortable in that way. And now on to my next tale of sexual innuendo. For those of you who uh, skipped the first part, welcome back. Um, and uh, I'm just going to say I don't know whether m the Michigan legislature has an anti-harassment policy, but I do know they have rules of decorum and courtesy. And uh, it's one of the reasons representatives address a speaker rather than each other. It it's to keep things from becoming too personal uh, between opposing members. Right? They want to keep things very civil. Anyway, a while back, sometime last year, um, Democrat and State Representative Lisa Brown was speaking in the House about proposed restrictions on access to abortion. And the grand finale of her speech consisted of this line. Mr. Speaker, I'm flattered you're so interested in my vagina, but no means no. That was one heck of an innuendo. No? Keep in mind, this was not a private conversation. Brown was addressing the House and the Speaker in a formal setting that is supposed to be imbued with dignity. Keep in mind also, the innuendo was projected onto another individual. While the donglers had commented, I would totally fork that guy's repo, meaning that the innuendo was clearly not targeted at the person or persons offended by it, Brown's innuendo was aimed directly at the Speaker and indirectly through him at the Republican members for whom the Speaker acts as a verbal proxy. And keep in mind the rapey overtones. Her conclusion, but no means no, turns what might have been merely a sexual innuendo into an imputation of malicious sexual intent. Here Brown is clearly crossing the bounds of polite discourse or even biting rhetoric and attacking the Speaker and through him the Republican members with projections of all kinds of nastiness. It's not just that he's interested in her vagina. 
she's portraying him as if he's persistently, lecherously, maliciously interested and not taking no for an answer. Now, Brown got herself suspended from the legislature over it, and after some mature and reasoned debate, most feminists in the mainstream and online accepted that this was the proper course of action. Though they supported Brown in her staunch advocacy of abortion rights, they conceded that she'd gone too far in her rhetoric and had made many, many people deeply offended and uncomfortable. They expressed the hope that she could learn a lesson from this as to what is appropriate in a professional setting and what is not. I mean, feminists could see that this wasn't just a conference where professionals gather in a semi-social capacity to learn and network. It was a session of the state legislature, where keeping things respectful and impersonal is so important that they have a speaker to act as a mediator so that no one is ever directly addressing their opponents in a debate. And they could definitely see how such sexual innuendos contribute to a hostile environment, that they're never appropriate, not even when directed at no one in private conversations, let alone when directed at a respected government official in an open session. <laughs> yeah, no, you knew I was kidding, right? Feminist journalists and bloggers spun the incident so hard, I'm surprised the earth didn't tilt on its axis. They repeated the ridiculous quarter truth, not even a half truth for crying out loud, that House Republicans were upset over Brown's use of the word vagina. Look at the number of Google hits the incident receives on a search of Lisa Brown and vagina. Look at all the headlines, all of them focusing on the V word while gracefully dancing past the context in which it was used. You know, the whole part where she was liberally lacing her rhetoric with sexual overtones and implying the speaker was some kind of predator with a salacious and perverted interest in her own personal vagina. Feminist skills at quote mining know no rival. Not only can they isolate a fraction of a sentence or paragraph or essay and spin it to mean the opposite of its speaker's intentions to vilify that speaker, they can also apply the same skill to erase their own intentions when they've spoken and thereby vilify the listener. All she said was vagina, and she got suspended for doing nothing more than saying the word vagina. Now look at how many hits this partial quote gets. And here's how many hits the full quote reveals. I guess letting the public in on what Brown actually said didn't suit the feminist's agenda, because no one in the mainstream even bothered to write the entire thing down. And over the course of four million Google hits, the spin continued, repeating the bullshit in one huge game of internet telephone. It wasn't that she said something inappropriate. Nope, it was the fact that it is not okay for women to use medically correct terminology to describe their own body parts in the legislature. The word vagina, all by its lonesome, is so offensive to state Republicans that they were willing to suspend an honored member for merely uttering it. What a bunch of stuffed shirt upright fuddy-duddies. That was the response in the mainstream. The feminist response was an odd mix. Some of it sexually shaming the Republicans for taking offense to, you know, at something as innocuous as medically correct terminology for, women, for women's body parts. The implication was that those prudish old maids disguised as old white men fear women and sexuality so much that the mere mention of the word vagina was enough to get them all harumphing and tut-tutting. What a bunch of prudes! They probably have to have sex with the lights off. They're so disgusted by women's bodies and women's sexuality. Maybe they're even on the down low like we suspected all along. I mean, sheesh, take it easy, guys. It's just a vagina. Real men don't get uncomfortable about words. What are you, scared of a girl? Some of the feminist rhetoric and analysis excoriated the Republicans as controlling misogynists who wouldn't stop at banning the word vagina from the legislature if they could ban actual vaginas and the women attached to them altogether. The falsely portrayed Republican umbrage over this incident dovetailed just too perfectly with the other falsely portrayed Republican agenda to uh, dictate what women are and are not allowed to do with their own bodies for feminists to resist exploiting it. It's just about rich old white men wanting to keep women under their boot heels. The fiends. 
How dare these right-wing religious anti-choice, mostly white, mostly men take offense at the use of proper medical terminology. Never mind that abortion has more to do with what's going on in women's uteruses than with their vaginas. Still, it was medically correct. To suspend a representative from the legislature just because she used the word vagina in a debate about women's reproductive rights. Unconscionable! Sexism! Oppression of women's bodies! And even the language women can use to describe their own bodies! Obviously those men feel they own women's bodies! No fear of female sexuality! Patriarchal privilege! Blah blah blah! Mm. Now I found the full quote in an obscure discussion forum. Not in any of the articles feminists and pro-feminists and anti-republicans and liberals wrote to excoriate the state legislature for su suspending Brown, to vilify Republicans for not only wanting to control women's vaginas, but even the words they used to refer to their vaginas, and to hoist Brown on their shoulders for her heroism and martyrdom, or whatever they, ca they cared to call it. A video of the full speech Brown gave was linked to said discussion forum, where a single person noted in text what was actually said. That person did me a huge favor by writing the full quote down so it would become searchable by Google. Apparently, no one in the mainstream was interested in fact-checking, or perhaps the fact-checking they did didn't suit their agenda. The feminist response to Vaginagate seems to have been, If we pretend she never said that other shit, then she never did. And if we pretend hard enough, we can make some political hate and no one of any importance opted to call them on their lie of omission by disclosing in searchable text exactly what it was that Brown did say that day. One Republican representative was quoted in Slate as saying Brown's remarks were so offensive he wouldn't repeat them in mixed company. Of course, the spin in the Slate article slickly allowed the reader to infer that it was the mere mention of the word vagina that offended him, and not all of the other sexually suggestive verbiage on either side of it. I mean, do any feminists in any universe believe that said Republican would have been less offended by the phrase, Mr. Speaker, I'm flattered you're so interested in my hoo-hoo, but no means no. Or, Mr. Speaker, I'm flattered you're so interested in my vajayjay, -jay, but no means no. Or, Mr. Speaker, I'm flattered you're so interested in my lady flower, but no means no. Or, Mr. Speaker, I'm flattered that you're so interested in what I've got in my pants, but no means no. Really, the same ladies who took offense at some nerd's big dongles at a tech conference, who nearly went into apoplexies when David Cameron advised MP Angela Eagle to calm down, dear. Those ladies think that my above uh, reinterpretations of Lisa Brown's remarks would have made them any more appropriate in a legislature? Because that's what you would have to believe if you think it was the word vagina that Republican members of the Michigan legislature found so offensive that day. Anyone who scoffs at the idea that the mainstream news media is a bastion of feminism or feminist leanings, need only look at the over 4 million Google hits on the incident and compare them to the 4 hits on the full quote and the 9 on the partial to see how few mainstream outlets were even interested in covering the entire story. The news media did, however, cover the protest on the steps of the legislature in Lansing where Eve Ensler, Queen Vagina herself, spoke to a crowd of allegedly thousands about how unjust Brown's suspension was, how patriarchally domineering was the response to her mere utterance of the word vagina in the context of debating a bill where vagina appeared three times. See, they not only want to control our vaginas, ladies, but they want to limit our right to even say vagina. Those evil, patriarchal, hegemonically masculine, white, straight, cis, privileged motherfuckers. Brown is still hailed by feminists and the liberal media as the heroine of this story and of the pro-choice cause, a martyr who was sacrificed on the altar of patriarchal domination, oppressed by powerful straight white religious men for daring to use appropriate language in the workplace. They've beatified a woman who is, objectively, no better than the most vulgar creeps, sexually harassing her way to creating a hostile work environment in the state legislature 
a place where her use of sexually charged language and her gender leaves no room for any effective response. What possible rejoinder could any Republican member have made to such an innuendo that would not have reflected more poorly on him than upon Brown? Mr. Speaker, I can assure you I have no interest whatsoever in Representative Brown's vagina. Yeah, that would have gone over well. So, I think that comparing Donglegate to Vaginagate is a very useful exercise. Not least because, while I found Brown's statements inappropriate, I would have hesitated to support her being suspended for making them. Imputations of malicious intent slung onto one's political opponents is just the way the game is played. And if you're in elected office, chances are you're probably a scumbag. All she proved to us is what we've known all along. Politicians are scuzzy. But I'm certainly willing to say that Brown's remarks were way more inappropriate than anything the Donglers said in their private conversation. And where she chose to speak them was a way more inappropriate venue for those kinds of things. But in the land of feminism, what gets the goose a medal of honor, a noble badge of martyrdom, and beatification in the press should rightfully get the gander publicly shamed and fired, don't you know? But if feminists aren't consistent in their beliefs and values, it's good to know they're at least consistent in their political sliminess. Unless you want to posit that uh, the Donglers were unacceptable because they were a joke, while Brown's remarks were acceptable because they were not. I think it only goes to prove that uh, feminists are just humorless. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that, and if there are any PUAs or any other smooth talkers, male or female, in my viewership, please note in a comment any possible immediate rejoinders you can think of that might have, you know, sufficed to call Brown on her bullshit legislative session immediately without making the guy saying it come across as a dick. You know, I, I really would love to know because I can't think of, I cannot think of an appropriate comeback that would not have reflected more poorly on the person making it than on this manipulative bitch who said what she said. And let's just uh, give this contest uh, one week from the, uh, the date of upload. Midnight, one week from today. Uh, and uh, that's the deadline, and we will do the tally of, of vote counting at that point. So, anyhow, that's it for me, and uh, hopefully that expresses my opinion on Donglegate, uh, although I suppose I have more opinions on it, but none that I would really put in a video. So, there you go. Bye.